Hi, I'm Sandra Benoit. Here is the pre-release material, the pseudocode for task 1 and task 2 for the paper 2-1. So in paper 2-1, we're doing the voting system. Here's the steps, you know, to kind of see what's happening. Number one, you know, we have the tutor and the interface. So the program asks the tutor input the tutor group. The tutor inputs 11a. And then what happens is we've created an array called student ID and it's initialized to an empty, you know, 0000 for the number of students that the tutor input and we have those students ready in the class. After that, we ask the, the tutor how many candidates are there in this class. For example, if the tutor says three, then we're going to create an array called votes and the length of that array or the size of that array is three elements we're going to initialize them to zero 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 we also have our variable abstained which holds how many students have abstained from voting we're going to ask the tutor what are the names of the candidates and then we have another array called names candidates it has stored the three names for example adam bob and carl now we've finished with the tutor input so now students are going to start to input their data First, a student inputs their ID. So let's say they input 100. And then the program is going to check that 100 is not an element already in student ID in the, in the array. If it's not in the array, that means you know that ID hasn't been used before, it's a valid ID, please input your vote. Do you want to press one for Adam, two for Bob, three for Carl, or zero to abstain? So we're going to store that ID 100 and we're going to store their vote, for example, one for Adam. And the for loop will continue for all the students, for the 30 students. So here's the second student, the ID 101. That ID hasn't been used before. It's a valid ID. Input your vote. For example, this person also input number one for Adam. So now you can see that the number of votes for Adam in the array votes has updated to two. Let's say, for example, the third student input their ID 102 and we run a check and we make sure that 102 is a unique ID. It hasn't been used before. It's a valid ID. We ask that student to input their vote. So they input three because they want to vote for Carl. So now we've updated the array votes. There's two for Adam, zero for Bob and one for Carl and zero have abstained. After that, we're going to ask the fourth student to input their ID, so they input 103. Again, we check 103 hasn't been used before, it's a valid ID. Input your vote. For example, the student decided to abstain from voting, so now the abstain variable has updated and it used to have zero, now it has one. So let's say we finished the entire class, all 30 students have input their votes. We have that Adam has 11, Bob has 10, Carl has three, and, zero have and two have abstained. It's time for the last part of task one and two, which is to display the results. So candidate one, Adam got 11, candidate two, Bob got 10, candidate three, Carl got seven votes, and the number that abstained were two, the winner is Adam. So we're just gonna have a look at the pseudocode, you know, for task one and two combined, because task two is an extension to get task one. Here's the pseudocode from the task one video. The beginning, there is, you know, it's the same. We input the tutor group and we validate the tutor group. Input how many students are in this tutor group. Validate how many students. Input how many candidates are running and validate that. Then we're going to have num names candidates is equal to the empty string of num candidates. Votes equals zero times num candidates. Abstain is going to be zero. And we're adding this extra line, student ID is equal to zero times the number of students. So now we're going to have an empty array for to be able to fill in the 30 student IDs and check that they're unique. And also at the end of this pseudocode, we have a for loop, which allows us to input the names of the candidates. That was the first part of the pseudocode, which is related to the tutor. Now we're going to start the pseudocode related to each student. So first we're going to ask each student, type your student ID to check if you can vote, input the current ID. If that current ID is already in our student ID array, 
then we're going to print your ID has already been used to vote. You cannot vote. Else, we're going to store that student ID. So student ID of count is equal to current ID. And then we're going to show that student, here are the names of the candidates that are in your class. Please, you know, press 1 to vote for Adam, for example. Press 2 to vote for Bob. Press 3 to vote for Carl or to abstain. Press 0. Input their vote and validate their vote. Okay, and after that, we're going to keep updating using a case. So if they clicked zero, then abstain equals abstain plus one. If they clicked on one, then, you know, for example, Adam's votes is going to become Adam's votes plus one. Or if they type two, Bob's votes are going to be Bob's votes plus one. Or if they type three, Carl's votes are going to be Carl's votes plus one. And we kept the four because it's a case statement and there's maximum four students. Finally, the last bit of, you know, task two is exactly the same. We're just going to have a for loop to show all the candidates' names and how many votes they caught. And we're also going to identify the most number of votes. And we're going to display the winner. Thanks for watching. Pseudocode for task two. Let me know what else I can help you out with. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.